Hello, I'm going to show you how to transcribe DNA. I'm going to do it by using a dictionary in Python and a for loop. So we need to know how a for loop works, we need to know how a dictionary works, and then we combine it to achieve this task. Um, to start with, I'm going to just copy a um, certain piece of DNA sequence and this is our job. Please generate the corresponding mRNA using a dictionary. We can see that this is very appropriate. So the first thing is I'm going to take that sequence, copy it and put it into a variable. So maybe call it DNA sequence or sequence for short and goes into quotes because it is a piece of string contain those characters GCT and so on and we can check if it works by just putting in that name and yes now we have it in a variable called sequence. So this is our sequence that we want to transcribe and if we want to trans transcribe it we need to have an association between every symbol in the DNA and the corresponding symbol in the messenger RNA. So how do we do it? We create a dictionary. It's called DNA2RNA and the way to do it is set it up in curly brackets. That's how you create a dictionary and for every letter in DNA we need to now put in as a key we need to associate the corresponding letter in the messenger RNA. So for A would be U, for T would be A, for C would be G and finally for G would be C. And check if that's complete. Looks good. We have four keys A, T, C and G and four values which are U, A, G and C. So now we have a dictionary that we can use. How would we get it? So we know that we'll have a DNA nucleotide. How do we get the corresponding RNA symbol? Well, the way to do it is to use keys if a, of a dictionary. So our dictionary is called DNA to RNA. And if we wanted to know what uh, symbol A in DNA corresponds to, we just put it in as the key of that dictionary and we get the reply U. And similarly, if you put the others in according to the association that you have done. So that's work. That works and we know how to do it. And finally we need to know how to create that string. A string which we want to have in a similar way as it's done here for the DNA. We want to have something, something similar as an RNA. So means we have symbol by symbol if we iterate through the DNA sequence and we need to put those together to form one long string rather than to have them individually flying around. So I'll just show you how to do this by means of an example which is we have two variables called lowercase a and b and they are both symbols. So we have a lower a and a lowercase b and how can we join these two together? Well the way to do it is string concatenation and it uses the plus equals convention. So if we say A plus equal B, what happens is that the contents of A will be taken and the contents of B will be added to it and a new string will be created called A that contains both symbols together. So let's check whether this is true. Let's just print A as a result of this code. And it works. A and B are defined individually and A plus equal B returns a string AB 
we just need to check will it work iteratively so if we copy and paste that operation and do it twice what will happen and then the result of this code will be a b b because we have added b we have a b then we add another b we get a b b so checked and now we can start to create our for loop to iterate through the DNA sequence in order to create our corresponding messenger RNA. The result that we expect will be the RNA sequence. We can call it RNA-sec for short. And we start it, because not knowing anything else, with an empty string. Then we set up our for loop, the syntax of which is go through every symbol in that DNA sequence. So every symbol is a nucleotide. So we might say go for a nucleotide in the DNA sequence. It was called SEQ sequence. And we end syntactically with a colon and we indent the following text to be executed within the for loop. So now how do we get it? So we have nucleotide. How do we get the corresponding nucleotide of the RNA? Well, we use the dictionary, of course. The dictionary is called DNA to RNA. And we want to find out for the current nucleotide, we want to find out was it, what is the value of the corresponding RNA. And then we need to assign the name. So we can just use our RNA sec because knowing the convention plus equal we can say for the first DNA nucleotide you put it to an empty string and consecutively you just add it to whatever you have so far and make this longer and longer. So using string concatenation will just give us this piece of RNA in the end if everything works fine. And that's actually it. Surprisingly simple code that we can do. Only we want maybe see the result in the end. So how will we do that? We want to print what we started with, which was a sequence. And then in a new line, we want to print the result of the operation, which was the RNA. And we can do it a little bit nicer, nice formatting and put a text there. Uh, what is it going to show? The first thing is going to be the DNA and the second thing is going to be the messenger RNA. And if we get that out, we can see both things one on top of the other. Top is the DNA that we had originally. Let's check. It was GCTG and indeed it's GCTG. And the corresponding messenger RNA starts with C, G, A, C, and so on continues. So you can see how the use of a dictionary makes this extremely convenient to get such a thing. And if you wanted to move on, and I think there will be an exercise to try and do that, you can use this mRNA and also translate it to the corresponding amino acid sequence, of course, using a dictionary. And finally, what is that sequence? The sequence is the start of human hunting teen, the mutation of which can lead to Huntington's disease. And I took the sequence from the NCBI gene bank.